Today we have Owen Hall from Chinese Academy of Science to give a talk about projective manifold whose tangent bundle contains a strictly NAF subshift. Owen Hall, come on. It's our uh, time. Okay. Thank you for the invitation and thanks for the introduction. Uh, today I'm going to talk about projective manifold whose tangent bundle contains a strictly NAF subshift. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, wait a second. Uh, me? Okay. Oh, so uh, first, uh, let's introduce, uh, introduce the background of the problem. So we consider X a complex projective manifold. Then it will be a classic problem in differential geometry uh, to determine the variety by looking at curvature conditions. So uh, the, one of the most famous uh, conjecture in this area is the Frank Carroll conjecture. So it says that if X has positive bisectional curvature, then X is isomorphic to the projective space. Uh, and we know that uh, if X is a complex projective manifold, then after the Chose theorem, uh, X is always algebraic which means that X is defined by polynomial functions. So there is also an analog in algebraic geometry of this conjecture. Uh, we replace the curvature condition by positivity conditions. That is the Hartron conjecture. So it says that if the tangent bundle is ample, then X is isomorphic to PN. So these conjectures are ra were raised uh, in the 1960s or 70s, and they are proved uh, around 1980. So the Frankel conjecture was proved by Xiu, Xim Tong Xiu and, uh, and Yao uh, by analytic methods. And the Hartung conjecture was proved by Mori uh, by algebraic methods. In particular, Mori used uh, reduction modular P, this pure algebraic methods to prove the Hartung conjecture. I also want to uh, underline that the uh, bisectional curvature, uh, positive bisectional curvature will imply ampleness. So this Hartung conjecture is a little bit slighter, a, a little bit stronger than the Frankel conjecture. So since then, uh, many remarkable generalizations have been established. So for, for instance, if we replace the positive Condition by semi positive uh, mock classifier, compact Kähler manifolds with semi positive holomorphic bisectional curvature. So, roughly uh, up to a tile cover, there are uh, symmetry spaces over a uh, torus. And on the algebraic side, uh, we replace ample condition by NAP condition. So, the structure of projective manifolds with NAP tangent bundles have been uh, investigated by many mathematicians, so such as uh, Kampana, Demayi, Pitanel, Schneider, and so on. So in particular, they kind of show that up to a tile cover, uh, it is uh, such a manifold, it is an isotribial family of final manifold with net tangent bundle over a billion variety. And now the remaining problem uh, for this uh, Projective manifold with net tangent bundle is the following conjecture. It says that uh, a final manifold with net tangent bundle is always isomorphic to a rational homogeneous space. And this is uh, known as Campana Pitanel conjecture. And this conjecture is still uh, largely open. And we remark that uh, in, the, in these uh, two problems, if we replace the strict positive condition by semi-positive condition, then in particular, we allow a trivial bundle as a semi-positive bundle. So in particular, abelian varieties are allowed in these classifications. Then one might ask if we impose some weaker positive condi condition than the strict positive condition, but still uh, stronger than the semi-positive, which exclude the trivial bundle case, can we have some uh, stronger uh, restraint? 
constraints on the classif uh, classification. In particular, we are interested in this uh, strictly net uh, positivity condition. So let's first uh, recall the definition of strictly net sheet or strictly net bundle. So a line bundle L or X is strictly net if it intersection with any curve is strictly positive for any complete curve C in X. And we can define by the classic way uh, the po net positivity of a vector bundle. So a vector bundle F is strictly net if its tautological line bundle O1 is strictly net on this projective wise bundle PF. So particular, we can see easily that uh, if a line bundle is strictly net, then it can never be trivial, even a numerically trivial. And we can also show that uh, if a vector bundle is strictly net, then it cannot be a trivial vector bundle. That's uh, a condition that uh, which satisfy the condition I mentioned before. Uh, this positive condition excludes trivial bundle. And I also uh, underline that uh, these two implications are strict. So we have seen, uh, of course, this one, this implication is, of course, strict. And this implication is strict as well. Uh, I recall that a line bundle is ample if its intersection with any uh, sub variety is strictly positive. And here for strictly if you only look at one dimensional sub variety. So the definition are different, and we can construct examples which are strictly enough and which are not ample. Uh, Strict net uh, vector bundles, they have some nice properties. They are, they are preserved under proofbacks of finite morphisms. So in particular, strict netness is preserved under restriction. So if we restrict a strict net vector bundle on a sub-variety, it is still strict net. And this might be the only uh, nice property for strict netness. Uh, in particular, strict nappiness does not behave well under tensor product. So recall that if we have two nap vector bundles, then their tensor product is still nap. If we have two ample vector pro, uh, bundles, then their tensor product is again ample. However, if we are in the middle, this does not hold. For example, there exists flat vector bundles which are strictly net. So flat vector bundle is determinant, is numerically trivial, but somehow it can still be strictly net. And we will see an example later. So uh, we know that the determinant is inside the tensor power. So this means that uh, strict netness does not preserve, it's not preserved under tensor product. Uh, so, Let's uh, return to the problem that I mentioned before. So if we re replace the strict, uh, the positivity condition in the previous problem by strict net, what we have. So uh, together with Yang Xiaokui and Li Duo in 19, uh, sorry, in 2019, we proved the following theorem. Uh, if the tangent bundle is strictly net, then X is isomorphic to Pn, which is the same conclusion as Hashan conjecture. Do you have any question? Okay. Uh, now, on the other side, it is also known that the existence of positive subshift of tangent bundle already imposes strong geometry restriction on ambient manifold. So a famous theorem in this domain is the following theorem. Uh, which was proved by Andrzejewska <laughs> and Wisniewski in 2001. It says that if there is an ample locally free subsheaf f of tangent x of the tangent, then x must be the projective space. And such ample subsheaf is also classified. Either it is the whole tangent or it is isomorphic to a direct sum of O1. 
uh, later on, uh, people prove that uh, the local freeness here can be removed, and we still have this uh, x isomorphic to p p n. For example, uh, our proof is in twenty uh, and two thousand six, and my collaborator Liu Jie also proves uh, in uh, in nineteen uh, seven, seventeen. Uh, sorry, uh, twenty seventeen. I think. Uh, here I I underline that a subshift means that the quotient of Tx by F might not be a locally free shift. That means a subshift. A subbundle means that the quotient Tx uh, over F is a vector bundle. And motivated by the previous problem, we are interested in the following things. What happens if we replace the ample, this positive condition, by a slightly weaker positive condition, strictly than that, in this uh, theorem. And does this theorem still hold for this uh, classification? And the answer is no. And there is an example, which is called Munford's example. This example uh, was known even before Hartshorn's conjecture. Uh, it is known in 1960s, I think. It is called Munford's example, but the construction goes back to Cesare on vector bundles. And this example uh, was written down in Hartron's book. So uh, I don't know why this is called Munford's example. But anyway, uh, let's see be a projective curve of genus at least two, a smooth projective curve of genus at least two. Then there is a Hermitian flat vector bundle E of rank two which is strictly net. So that's a flat vector bundle, which is strictly net. And now, if we take X, the projective wise of this flat vector bundle, then it's relative tangent. It's just isomorphic to this O2, twice the tautological line bundle. So by definition, this guy is strictly net. And uh, so TXC, it is a sub-bundle of tangent of x. So this is an example uh, of strictly net subshift, even subbundle in tangent of x, but x is not the projective space. So the first example is very uh, is known for a very long time. It is a month for the example. And the topic uh, we are going to uh, talk about is the classification of a uh, projective manifold whose tangent bundle contains strictly net subshift. And we prove the following theorem. Now assume that Tx contains a locally free strictly net subshift F of some rank R. Then X is isomorphic to a projective bundle, a PD bundle over a hyperbolic manifold T. Moreover, this uh, subshift is indeed contained in the relative tangent. Here, I would like to underline that hyperbolic manifold here, it means that there is no entire curve in this uh, manifold T. Since T is projective, this body hyperbolicity is equivalent to Kobayashi hyperbolicity. Indeed, uh, we prove something more. We even kind of classify uh, this subshift F. So on every fiber of this uh, PD bundle, so written down as phi from x to t, the restriction of f is ample. Indeed, we prove that either f is the whole relative tangent, like in Munford's example, f equal to tx over t, or uh, this is uh, we know less information in this case. So f in every fiber is isomorphic to O1 direct sum of O1 on every fiber. So in another word, X is a family of Andretta Wisniewski pairs, so say a family of projective space. And in the family, uh, there, are such, uh, there are ample subshifts in the tangent space of the projective space. So we get a family of, of uh, PD with such ample subshifts here.
and this family is parameterized by hyperbolic manifold T. Do you have any questions on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have uh, one question. Yeah. Uh, yes, I have uh, one question. Uh, so for the local lane freeness, uh, uh, in your sense, it means that uh, for its quotient, uh, it's also locally free, right? Or uh, here, locally it is uh, if the quotient is locally free, we call it a sub-bundle. Okay, okay. Here, the okay. quotient is uh, okay, okay. just a torsion-free shift. Uh, no, may yeah. maybe even we don't we don't assume torsion freeness. So it is just a subshift, but itself is locally free. Okay, I see, I see. Okay. I have a question. So do you have some high dimensional examples? So like Mumford example for your theorem? Yes, uh, I will introduce very soon. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, let's continue. So you might be curious why we obtain something hyperbolicity here. So indeed, we prove a condition on the fundamental group of this, uh, the base T or the, the fundamental group of X because X is fiber over T with simply connected fibers. They have the same uh, fundamental groups. We prove some condition on these fundamental groups. More precisely, we show that, uh, so this is just a particular case. In, dimension t is positive, then this fundamental group admits a linear representation whose image is not virtually abelian. So uh, for example, this condition already implies that any entire curves in t, its Zariski closure cannot be t, the entire t. Indeed, uh, we, if we, con we consider our entire curve here, and then we take the Zariski closure of this entire curve, and we still have the same uh, condition on the fundamental group of the Zariski closure, which means that the fundamental group has a linear representation whose image is not virtually abelian. Then we can uh, obtain a contradiction because any entire curve in such a variety uh, cannot be dense, cannot be Zariski dense. Okay, so this kind of uh, uh, representation property we prove and we conclude the hyperbolic of T. And in particular, we show that if Tx, uh, the, the tangent bundle contains straight F subshift F, so in, in the condition before, if we assume further that X is simply connected, then X is isomorphic to Pn, because the representation of any simply connected thing of one point is always a one point, it's always a billion. So, so the T cannot have dimension positive. Or if we assume here X, the fundamental group of X is virtually abelian, then X is Pn as well, because the representation of any virtually abelian, abelian group, the image is also virtually abelian. So this one, this, this can't happen. And so I, uh, I mentioned in the introduction that if Tx contains a locally free string F subshift, and if we assume the fundamental group is uh, virtually abelian, then X is Pn. So this, we have a kind of a characterization of P. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, more examples. So before uh, we already have uh, this Munford example, so it is about uh, flat vector bundles, permission flat vector bundles, which are strictly nice. But that example is kind of uh, restricted because the, so the base is one dimensional. And the fiber is also one dimension. So it is an example of surface. So we want to uh, construct examples of higher dimension, higher dimensional global uh, total space and uh, examples of higher dimensional base space. So first, uh, the vector bundle, flat vector bundle in Munford's example is of rank two. That's why we obtain a family of P1. So first we want to know if there exists uh, vector bundles of higher rank flat vector bundles, which are also straight net. This was indeed uh, proved by uh, or constructed by Subramania in 1980s. He constructed Hermitian flat vector bundles of arbitrary rank, which are straight net. 
So I record a, a little bit of construction here. So assume this fundamental group of C is a standardly generated by these two G elements, A1, B1, uh, by AJ, BG, such that the computator product is equal to one. Then we may define a representation such that, so the, so this is a pi one C two S U R. So pi at the A one sent to alpha, B one sent to beta, A two sent to beta and B two, sorry, here is B two sent to alpha. Such that alpha beta is generic pair. And the other A I B I, uh, are sent to identity. So easy, we easily check that this is a representation from uh, pi 1c to sur. And if this pair is in general position, then such a representation will give us a Hermitian flat vector bundle to be one. So for example, here, if, x, if E is a, such a vector bundle, then this tx over c, so we, we take x equal to the projective wise of this uh, higher rank Hermitian flat straight net uh, vector bundles, uh, we prove that this relative tangent is again strictly net. So here, this is no longer a line bundle, so a little bit more work need to be done uh, to show that this is strictly net, but it, it's not difficult, so this is strictly net. So we have an example of higher, higher dimension and in the first case of our classification. So it is uh, the relative tangent. And for example, if we take G as the direction of the dual of these two Hermitian flat vector bundles, then G is again Hermitian flat because it's the direction of two Hermitian flat vector bundles. And now we take X equal to this guy, the projective wise of G. Now uh, we define F to be the pullback of E is positive, I mean, this strict enough guy, and then pullback by P, and then tensor by this tautological O1. Here, P is the natural projection from this X to C. Then we can use the relative Euler sequence to show that this is strict enough, and this is naturally included inside the uh, relative tangent. So I, here, I underline that uh, since this is a flat, uh, Hermitian flat, this guy is indeed uh, numerically net. So the dual of E is again numerically net. So it's again net. So this is something that you, we, we need to uh, pay attention. So E is a street net uh, vector bundle. In particular, it is net, but it is also Hermitian flat. So it is kind of a, it is a numerically flat vector bundle. So its dual is again numerically flat. So uh, its dual is again left. Okay, so we have these are uh, higher dimensional examples uh, such that on every fiber, the F is a direct sum of O1. So this is the example of the second case. These two examples, uh, the base is always one dimensional. So this X, these two X, they are always a uh, fiber over curve C. Uh, next, we can just examples of higher dimensional basis. For example, we can take S be the product of C. So let S be the product of two curves uh, of C uh, with natural projection P1, P2 to C. Now let E1, E2 be a generic couple of uh, these uh, Hermitian vector bundles constructed by Subramanian. We assume that the choices alpha 1, beta 1 for E1 and alpha 2, beta 2 for E2, they are in general position. Then we consider this uh, box cross vector bundles. So G, uh, Q equal to the P1 of E1, P1 prove back E1 tensor P2 prove back E2. This vector bundle on S, it is a Hermitian flat vector bundle. And we can prove that it is strictly net on S. Now we can uh, 
for z as before, for example, we let x equal to the projective wise of this GT map emission parameter bundle, then the relative tangent is GT map. And we can also use the second construction here to construct uh, examples of higher dimensional bases uh, such that on every fiber, the GT map shift is isomorphic to a direct sum of O1. Do you have any uh, questions? Okay, if no, uh, let's continue. Oh, here, uh, I have a question. It's something that we don't know how to prove and we don't know if it's correct. So we assume the same condition as before. So Tx, the tangent bundle contains a strict map subshift. Then we know that there is always a projective bundle structure. So from X to T, so every fiber is PD. My question is, is X isomorphic to the projective wise of a vector bundle E on T? Uh, know that uh, it is not always true that a projective bundle is the projective wise bundle of a vector bundle. In particular, this question is equivalent to ask the following thing. So you ask if there is, so is there a line bundle L on this X such that the restriction of this line bundle L on every fiber of this phi is isomorphic to O1. So it means that uh, this answer is yes, if there is a line bundle on X, which is relative of degree one. So they are equivalent. So we don't know if this is true because all the examples we know are uh, projective wise of vector bundles. So if someone could construct an example which is not the projective wise of a vector bundle, it would be good. Or if someone can prove that it is always a projective wise of a vector bundle. So this is a, a question that I I want to know, but uh, I don't know how to how to prove it or disprove. Uh, uh, I have uh, one question. Uh, so, in your, uh, so in your question. Uh, for the tangent bundle, it contains a uh, strictly uh, self shift. Uh, so in this case, uh, for this one, it's not a necessary locally free. Then you can also prove that. Uh, uh, here it's a locally free. Uh, yeah, okay. the, the sub uh, the strict net uh, sub shift here we, we consider in this talk they are net, uh, okay. they are locally free. Uh -huh. I don't know if if we if we re remove the locally free condition if we can. Obtain the same result. Uh, I don't know yet, but uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, you that might be a, uh, But uh, you expect that uh, so there is uh, some examples or some concrete examples. Uh, if we remove the locally free condition. Uh, if we remove, uh, optimistically, uh, I expect we still have this projective bundle structure. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Just like the uh, the case of uh. The theorem of the Andrei is Nupski. So any ample, not necessarily free subshift of tangent bundle implies that the variety is Pn. So we expect, I expect yes. the same uh, analog oh, yes. conclusion. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Here, yes. Uh, here, even we assume this uh, f is locally free, we still don't know whether there is some line bundle which is relative of degree one over the base. Yeah. 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 yeah see. Yeah, yeah, so I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, in the remainder, uh, I would like to explain uh, the idea of the proof. Mm, the proof is cons the proof consisted in, well, in major in four steps. The first thing you need to prove is that X is unit root. Recall that in Maury's proof of this uh, Hartron conjecture, indeed he first proved that uh, X, in his case, X contains rational curve, and then he studied uh, via this rational curve to conclude Hartron's conjecture. Indeed, in uh, algebraic geometry, to study this uh, positivity curve, 
varieties, usually uh, the first step is to, to find rational curves in the variety. So the first, so the first step for us is the same. So we need to prove that uh, we will show that X is union rule, which means that covered by rational curves. So once we can prove this, a classic technique in this theory of V. Uh, quickly that there is an open subset x0 of x, a large open subset, which means that the complement of the complement, its complement have co-dimension at least two, such that on this x0, we have a projective bundle structure. So we already have a projective bundle structure on a very large open subset of x. And indeed, it is this uh, property uh, that motivated us to prove that X is globally a projective bundle. So uh, in the following, of course, we aim to extend this globe, uh, this PD bundle structure X0 to T0 to the global X. But uh, the, the abstract positivity of F can only provide such conditions. So to go further, we need to study in more details of this strictly mapped subsheet. So we study in particular in the special case, we assume that X is already a projective bundle, a projective wise bundle over some manifold. And then we assume there is some strictly mapped subsheet inside, and then we will see what happens. Indeed, we will obtain much, much more information when we do this. Now with these informations in hand, we can prove the following things, which provide us an extension of this uh, x0 to t0. So it says the following. The third step, there is exactly one kx negative extremal ray in the Mori cone of x. And this kx negative extremal ray induces a Mori vibration. So this is a contraction of fiber types. It can check the whole x to a smaller dimension variety. It is, so first it is the MRC vibration and it extends this X0 to T0. That's why I use the same uh, letters. So this Mori vibration extends this rational map or this uh, bundle from X0 to T0. So if you are not familiar with this uh, language of MMP, it is not important. It is not important. So you can still understand the talk very well. This just roughly means that every rational curves are contracted. So every rational curve in X is contracted by this morphism phi from X to T. So the, we collect all rational curves in the fibers of phi. Now, once we have an extension of this projective bundle, then next we just want to prove that this extension is globally a projective bundle. We only need to prove that phi is equidimensional. Once we know that phi is equidimensional, then uh, classical MMP results will imply that uh, this phi is a projective bundle. So this is the last step of proof. Have any uh, questions? Sorry, um, yeah, I have a question. So in your step three, you uh, prove that there is exactly one extreme array. So you mean that you, of course, you don't use step two, right? You just study step two as example and see what happens or? Uh, indeed, what, what, we, we use, uh, okay. Uh, I, so uh, the point is that uh, just the abstract uh, positivity of this F, so F is strictly in F. So the abstract positivity does not provide much more than uh, this first condition. But if we do this, we study uh, uh, these things, uh, we, we will obtain the F, we will have a lot of information on F, uh, even just in this case, if it's a projectivized bundle over, mm. over uh, uh, manifold. So here, for example, we can blow up X and kind of we can compactify this into a, into a projective bundle, then 
compactify this family. But if we do the compactification, the compactification will not equal to x in general. But still, this uh, the second uh, the second step will provide us enough information to study the compactification. And by looking at the compactification, we can prove this uh, kx negative extremal rays problem. So we can study the rational curves in Phoenix. Okay, thanks. So you will see uh, how we how we proceed uh, in the following. So I will uh, explain a uh, step by step of the proof. So let me first prove the first step. So uh, x is unit root. So, uh, so recall that a uh, classic theorem of Miyaoka in 1986. He says that uh, if you have a, a subsheaf of the tangent x whose determinant is pseudo effective and not equal to zero, then the variety is uh, unit root. And then later by uh, this BDPP, famous BDPP, this is indeed an equivalent condition. So what we proceed is as follows. So just first we let F hat be the saturation of F in the tangent bundle TX, right? So F is the strict in F subsheaf. It is not assumed to be saturated. So I take the saturation F hat. So since F is NF, the determinant of F is NF. So the determinant of F hat is pseudo effective. Now, if this uh, pseudo effective uh, determinant is not numerically trivial, which means that the first chain class of f hat is not zero, then we can use Miyaoka's theorem to show that x is unit root. But I underline that uh, this is not always known because we have seen before that there are strict net vector bundles which are Hermitian flat, which means that the determinant of f or the determinant of f hat could be zero. Of course, we will show that this is not the case. So we will prove by contradiction that uh, x is unit root. So with the same notation here, now assume that x is not unit root, then we must have this guy is zero. So the c1 f hat is zero. Now since uh, f is zero is the smallest pseudo effective divisor, this implies that determinant of f is zero. So the determinant of f is equal to the determinant of f hat, and f is inside f hat. This just implies that uh, f is equal to f hat because uh, f is a vector bundle, f hat is reflexive. So in consequence, uh, if c1 f hat is zero, then we all have f is equal to f hat. Now, f is a saturated subsheaf in Tx and uh, it, it is indeed a math with trivial determinant, so it is, it is a numerical with math. So we can, uh, indeed here, we can use a theorem of Derma E to show that f is indeed a foliation, which means that uh, f is closed under Lie bracket. So this is an analytic proof and this is an analytic condition, so f is a foliation. As I mentioned, uh, f is net and its c1 is equal to zero. So f is so-called numerically net, which means that all the chain classes of f vanishes. That's why it's called a numerical net. So in particular, c2 of f is also zero. Now there is a classification of numerically flat foliation by Pera and Tuzi in 2013, which implies that f is never strictly in that. So this is a contradiction. So here the classification, uh, I just want to mention a little bit. Uh, it says that kind of, uh, if you have a numerically flat foliation on a manifold, then this manifold is dominated by a family of abelian variety. And this foliation is tangent to the abelian varieties. And on each abelian variety, the restriction of this foliation is a linear linear foliation. So we, we know that the tangent bundle of a uh, abelian variety is trivial. It kind of is, it says that this foliation restricted to every abelian variety is trivial. So a trivial bundle can never be a strictly net vector bundle. So that will be a contradiction. 
So that, that's how we use classification. So because there are a lot of abelian variety inside and every tangent to this family of abelian variety. So these three steps, uh, we proved that uh, it's this uni rule. And now by this uh, techniques of BMRT, mostly uh, written in Arhoto's paper in 2006, classic result in price that uh, there is a large open subset X0 of X, such that uh, X0 has a PD bundle structure. So X0 to T0. So do you have any question on the first step of the proof? So for the last, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you want me to explain yeah, a little bit? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh. the last step. Uh, so in this case, uh, how they can you use the result of uh, strictly nefness to prove the set is fiber, it's P, P, D. Oh, okay, thanks. So, uh, so, so we know that it is a uh, unit root. So we can take a, a, a general minimal cur rational curve, which is a covering family. So, so mm -hmm. the VMRT, so the, the covering family, which is uh, mm -hmm. compact, so generally compact. And now we restrict the whole tangent bundle of X, Tx, on a general curve, general such general rational curve. So for and the of course, it's equals to the dimension. Uh, uh, so for the constant at d, it's equals to. Uh, so for the d, uh, you can prove that it's uh, controlled by which constant? Uh, the d is just larger than or equal to the rank of f. That's all we know. So okay. the f is co is contained in the relative tangent uh, because, yeah, because uh, indeed, uh, if you look at a normal bundle uh, mm. uh, of a fiber. The normal bundle is a trivial. So this F map to the net normal bundle can it's always a zero map because F is strictly map, it mm. cannot map into a trivial bundle. So okay. it's contained in the uh, the relative bundle. Uh. That means that the PD is larger than the rank of F. Uh, so indeed, uh so uh in Edgar Vizlivsky's theorem, there are new proofs by using VMRT technique kind of they restrict the ample subshift or the, or the ample uh, subshift uh, yeah, of the tangent on a minimal rational curve. Then you can write down the decomposition of this, uh, this ample, uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, this restriction of this ample shift. But now we just know that a strict, the restriction of a strictly net uh, shift on a rational curve is always ample mm -hmm, mm. because you can always decompose uh, vector mm. bundles on P1. So mm. then the, the following is just exactly mm. uh, like, like what happens before because uh, when you restricted a uh, vector bundle on rational curves, you can no longer distinguish okay, ampleness see. and strict uh, uh -huh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's continue. So to the next step, as I mentioned, if I just use the uh, abstract mathness, this is all we can obtain, so nothing more. So to have, uh, to obtain more information, we need to use the condition that F is a subtangent, so uh, it's contained in this tangent bundle. So uh, we, we just look at examples to have idea. So to, to look at examples, we assume X to be a projectivized uh, bundle of a vector bundle E of a projective manifold. Then uh, as I mentioned that, that on every fiber, the normal bundle is trivial. So uh, we obtain that F must contain in the relative tangent because a strictly map shift can never map into a, a trivial bundle non-trivially. Uh, indeed, kind of we can show that if X is equal to PN, we can show that f is equal to tx or f is isomorphic to dial sum of O1. So we use the same techniques uh, of uh, the, the theorem of Andrzej Wisniewski. So here it's 
it's kind of the same as I mentioned before. So when you restrict on rational curves, when you restrict on a line in Tn, you can no longer distinguish straight madness and uh, ample news. So the proof works kind of the same. Also, uh, by assuming these conditions, we prove the following things. So assume that X is the projective wise bundle of a vector bundle over T. And assume that you have a subsheave in this uh, relative tangent. So I relax a little bit the problem here, uh, the, the, the condition here. So I assume this is net, not just net. So it is just net. And I let this phi be the uh, natural projection. The strict net I only assume on the fibers of this phi. So globally, this f is just net. But uh, on the fibers, I assume strict net. Then we have the following two properties, possibilities. So, so, so we prove one of the following holes. So the first thing is that if you assume all conditions here, either f is just the relative tangent, the whole relative tangent bundle. In this case, we prove that E is numerically projectively flat. So I will explain this uh, condition later. So first case, it is the relative tangent bundle and we have a numerically projective flat E. Or the second case is that uh, the restriction of F on every fiber is the direct sum of O1. And so it, if you have this, you know that uh, F is from the base. So there is a subbundle M of E star. M is a locally free shift of this locally free shift, a uh, subshift of this locally free shift E star, and its quotient is again locally free. So this is subbundle M of E star, such that F is the proof of M tensor by this OP01. So this is tautological M. Moreover, this subbundle M is numerically projectively flat. So we prove something similar to our main theorem. So we have this, so this is already known. We have a family of Pn. And if this is string f on fibers and f globally, this condition, we show that either it is uh, the tangent bundle, the relative tangent bundle, or this f is, or every fiber is the direct sum of O1. So we have a variation, a family of a pair of Andrea Davies Nupski. So Pn and ample subshift of the, the tangent bundle. So we, in particular here, we know that in both cases, there is always a numerically projectively flat vector bundle, which interprets. So there is always a involved a, a such a vector bundle. So I recall the definition. So a vector bundle is called numerically projectively flat if it is semi-stable. So with any uh, uh, divisor, for example, and equality holds in the Bogomolov geyser inequality. So this is the, the definition of numerically projective flat vector bundle. So I'm not going to go into detail of this uh, numerically projective flat vector bundles here, at least for now. Uh, I know that in the first chain class, or the determinant of this vector bundle is uh, numerically trivial, then a numerically projective flat vector bundle is numerically projective, uh, it's numerically flat. Sorry. So if, so it kind of this generalize the definition of numerically flat, but just you allow a uh, non trivial uh, first chain class. And indeed, we know that uh, by a work of Nakayama, uh, a numerically projective flat vector bundle is always an extension of Hermitian projective flat vector bundle. Uh, indeed, we prove the following things. So we prove that a numerically projective flat vector bundle on a projective manifold Z is always isomorphic to a holomorphic projectively flat vector bundle, which means that a vector bundle Q a holomorphic vector bundle Q, which admits a connection such that there are two conditions to be asked. So the first one, this is a projectively flat connection. So the curvature 
uh, takes the form so a global two form times the identity of the endomorphism. So this condition means uh, show uh, define the projectively flat connection. So this is the projective flat con condition. Secondly, I ask this uh, connection is compatible with the holomorphic structure on Q. So this is something we prove. And once these two conditions are satisfied, the projectivized of this uh, numerically projectively flat vector bundle. So if it is holomorphic projective flat, then it's uh, projectivized is a flat vector bundle, which means that it is given by a representation of the fundamental group into PGL. And this is how the uh, fundamental groups of the varieties uh, come into play, right? So because we prove some numerically projected threads, uh, vector bundles are involved. And that because these uh, vector bundles are closely related to representation of the fundamental group, that's why we can obtain information on the fundamental groups. So here I have some remarks that I did not write down, but I need to mention. So first, uh, if we remove the condition projectively here, so we just look at numerically flat vector bundles, then it is already proved. We can find the literature that uh, such a manifold is, uh, such a vector bundle is isomorphic to a flat vector bundle. So there is a categorical proof by Simpson uh, in this famous paper, this correspondence, Simpson correspondence paper. And there is a, a down to earth elementary proof by uh, Deng Ya. Indeed, our proof is motivated by uh, Deng Ya's proof because I do not understand uh, Simpson's proof. So uh, I also have a question: Is that uh, given it, it given a uh, so? Indeed, we can always construct. So if you have a, a holomorphic uh, project flat vector bundle, then it is an extension of Hermitian flat vector bundle. In particular, as C infinity vector bundles as smooth vector bundles, uh, it is isomorphic to a direct sum of Hermitian flat vector bundles. In particular, we just take the direct sum of the, the, the chain connection, we obtain a projectively flat uh, connection. But of course, this connection is not compatible with the holomorphic structure. So my question is, if you have a holomorphic vector bundle, which admits a C infinity projectivity flat connection. Does it imply that there is a projectivity flat uh, connection which is compatible with the uh, holomorphic structure? So, do you have any uh, question on this page? Okay, if no, let's continue. So now uh, the, the previous theorem uh, tell us uh, much, much more about the, the shape F, right? Because, and also we even know more on the structure of the bundle. It is not very far away from a flat projective bundle. Okay, so a simple corollary of the, of the theorem before is that Assume that X is the projectivized bundle of a vector bundle over T, and assume that F is a strict F subshift. Then T is never simply connected. In particular, T cannot be P1. So the proof is very simple. It follows from the fact that uh, every numerically projectively flat vector bundle on a simply connected manifold is a direct sum of a line bundle, the same line bundle. So if you do this, you, you calculate yourself, then uh, you show that uh, the projectivized of, of every uh, numerical flat vector bundle, projective flat vector bundle is isomorphic to a trivial projective bundle. And for example, uh, in the first case, uh, the relative tangent can never be string in F, so because it is trivial on every fiber over PD. So, so this relative tangent is not uh, 
stream f. So we obtain a contradiction. So in the second case, we can uh, deduce the same contradiction, but uh, it is a little more complicated, but the idea is the same. So uh, you see here, we, it, yeah. Sorry, I have a question. So how can you conclude the, the equality, equality of the problem of geodesic inequality? So why it, it achieved the equality? So in your previous page, I, I don't know why it can achieve the, the, the equality. Okay, so uh, oh, I will answer your question in the next page, which okay. I will uh, introduce okay. the proof okay, okay. Of, the, of the theory. Okay, okay, okay. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, let's finish this page. So for example, here we, we exclude the base to be a P1. So this is kind of important because, so if you still remember my plan of the proof in the third step, I will prove that there is a contraction, more contraction, such that every rational curve in the, is in the fiber. In particular kind of, you, you need to prove that there is no rational curve in the base of your Mori contraction, right? But here, this is how we obtain such things. Idea, the idea is that you see, uh, if you have these uh, string maps guys in the red tangent, or even in the tangent, then the base can never be P1. And we know that uh, such a mapping is, is preserved under restriction. So if kind of you imagine you have a P1 in the base, and then we, we just restrict everything on the family over the base, then we will obtain a contradiction. That's why we, in the third step, we can show that there is no more rational curves in the base. So that's why I mentioned before that uh, once we have more information in this step, we can proceed further. Okay, uh, now I want to show you the idea of the proof. So for simplicity, uh, uh, I will do the following assumption. So first, uh, I assume that the restriction of F on every fiber, on one fiber or a general fiber is isomorphic to the tangent bundle. So I know that uh, the restriction of F on every fiber is strictly uh, map, which it must be ample by, by something we mentioned earlier, because it is every fiber is Pn. So uh, it might be Tf or a direct sum of O1. I assume that on a general fiber, the restriction of F on the fiber is Tf. So this general means that uh, it represents a large open, uh, not, sorry, a, an open dense, not, not necessarily very large. So there is an open subset dense T0, so directly open T0 in T such that you restrict F on this, on the family over T0 is just the relative tangent. But now we need to prove that the equality holds in the whole uh, variety. So, uh, we know that f is inside uh, tx of t, and this f to tx over t is subjective generically. So we have uh, injective morphism from the determinant of f into the determinant of uh, relative tangent. So because they have the same rank, this is what we, what we assume here. So determinant of this guy is, uh, is pseudo-effective because f is an f, so determinant of f is an f. So the determinant of this relative tangent is pseudo-effective. Moreover, it's a negative locus is contained in x exclude phi minus one t zero. In particular, it's a negative locus does not dominate the base. So uh, the negative locus, I'm not going to explain the definition here. It's a relativity a technical definition, but you can see that here, so this is, uh, this f and tx over t, they're the same on this phi minus one of t zero, and this guy's nap is positive. So this guy, tx over t, can only be negative outside phi minus one t zero. So this is why the negative locus is contained in, in this guy. In particular, the image of this negative locus in the base t is contained in t excluded uh, t zero. On the other hand, uh, we compute the relative tangent. The relative tangent is equal to this guy. So by the relative Euler sequence, you show that the relative tangent, the determinant is OD plus one tensor, five star determinant E star. And even though you can have different choices of E, 
to obtain the same isomorphic class of X. This determined very dependent is intrinsic, and this guy is also intrinsic as well. So even though it's that it's the we write down with the choice of E, but indeed this guy is also intrinsic. Okay, so this is the theorem we prove. So in this guy, O D plus one tends a five star determine E star. This is pseudo effective. And if its negative locus does not dominate T, then E is numerically projective effect. Uh, so uh, let me uh, say something about this theorem. So first, we see that if you have a numerically projective effect uh, vector bundle, you tensor by a line bundle. It is again numerically projective flat, and their projective wise are isomorphic. But as, as, an, as I mentioned before, so if you replace E by E tensor a line bundle, E tensor L in this expression, you are going to obtain uh, an isomorphic line bundle here. So this, which means that this guy is kind of intrinsic on E. It depends only on the projective wise bundle of E. So this is already kind of something normalized here. And if this is normalized, uh, so it, it's this is the first property I need to mention. So you see that this is something uh, intrinsic. So for example, if in a special case, if E, the determinant of E uh, can be, the determinant of E can be uh, divisible by, uh, by the rank, then we can assume that we can pick pick some line bundle L such that E tensor L has trivial uh, determinant. So the determinant is uh, numerically trivial. In that case, this guy is trivial. And it means that this one, OPE T plus one is pseudo effective. Now, now we call that if this, so if this is zero and if this one, OD plus one is nav, it just means that E is nav. And if E is nav and the determinant of E is zero, then it is a numerical flat. So that that's the the case, the, uh, a nice case that uh, we 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 are, if we assume that this is nav and we assume that determinant of E uh, can be divisible by the rank, then we can use the, even the definition to show that E is numerical flat because it is, I mean, up to a tensor uh, by a line bundle, it is numerical flat. Yeah. But uh, it, here we use the fact that, so here it, we only know that this is pseudo effective. We again assume that the determinant E is trivial. So this guy is trivial. So we only have this guy. So the OPE D plus one is pseudo effective. Mm -hmm. And it's a negative locus does not dominate T. Then uh, by a theorem of Horik and Peternell, they show that E is again numerically flat. So this is in their paper on the on a complement of uh, the, the proof of uh, a theorem of Duell, which extends throughout Duell's theorem to any dimension the, on the uh, singular mobile bogomorph decomposition. I have one more question. Uh, I have one question. Uh, so in your theorem, uh, you don't need to assume. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, so in your theorem, uh, so for E is locally free, and uh, you need to assume that it's a strictly level or, or something other. It's uh, uh, the only assumption is that it's locally free. So E is uh, so X is equal to projective wise of E. Yeah. So so uh, you. Mm, uh, so in this case, uh, uh, so oh. for your theorem, uh, uh, so for your theorem, the only assumption is that uh, E is locally free. Yeah, yeah. So here you have a projective manifold T. You have uh -huh. a locally free shift E, such that this guy is pseudo effective and its negative locus does not dominate T. Uh -huh. And its white bundle mm -hmm. is numerically project projective uh -huh. flat. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think. Sorry. I don't think we need the locally freeness of E because. Uh, yes, that's true. If I mean, if you, you, you can even remove the locally freeness on E, uh, uh -huh. it is uh, reflexive. You'll, you'll be okay as well. 
but then you, you just need to be a little bit careful on the tautological elements. But I see, I see, I see. So in this case, we can do uh, uh, because of its no, uh, yeah, because of its uh, negative lo uh, locus, it's uh, strictly contained in T. So in this case, so we have yes, 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 uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so, so for example, so, so on this proof, kind of if we assume that the determinant of E can be divisible by its rank, then we can reduce to the case that a determinant of E is numerically trivial. Then we use a theorem of uh, Horan Pitanel to can, can grow our theorem. But in general, uh, it is not known if this, the determinant of E can be divisible by its rank. So we cannot always reduce to the case that determinant E is trivial. Uh, in this case, we are going to look at uh, the symmetry power of E and kind of you can embed the projective wise of E into the projective wise of symmetry power of E. And then you are going to have some uh, uh, Chen number inequality for, for the symmetry power of E. But then the Chen number of the uh, symmetry power, they are related to the Chen number of the, the 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 original vector point of E, right? So the indeed the the Chen number equality on symmetry power of E will imply the Chen number equality we want the Bokolomov Giesel inequality, the equality in Bokolomov Giesel inequality we want in E. So that, that so uh, this is uh, about uh, Deng Yang's question. Does, does this answer your questions? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can kind of put this guy into the symmetry power, then it will be divisible. And we have Chen, Chen number equality there. Okay. So this is something we prove. And this theorem is mainly rely on the theorem of Horing and Peter Nell. Uh, Okay, so so this how we, this is how we obtain the numerical uh, projective flatness in our uh, in in the theorem. So of course I only assume this case, but the other case the proof is the idea is similar, but the proof is more technical. So I'm going to introduce here. So so this is the second step. Do you have any questions for the second step? So if no, uh, let's continue. Okay, now uh, I will prove the third step. So, which means that I'm going to study rational curves in X. So, uh, I recall the first step. The first step says that uh, if we have such conditions, so F is in F in T X, then we have a projective bundle on a large open subset X zero of X. So, we have a diagram like this. Next, I will show that every rational curve in X is numerically proportional to a line in a fiber of phi zero. And if we can prove this, then there will be only one uh, K extreme race, which is generated by the lines on the fibers of phi zero. So that's something we, want, we are going to prove. So in particular here, I'm not going to prove that there is a morphism which can check all rational curves. We are going to prove that uh, rational curves are numerical. So I'm going to really prove the a theorem on the cone of X. So uh, to do this, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to do the following things. We are going to compactify this family uh, into a compact family, projective family. Well, of course, once we compactify this family, the total space denoted as X bar here is a priori not the same as X. So, but it can be obtained by blowing up X. So, so this is a uh, modification or birational proper map from X bar to E. So indeed, uh, we have the following things. So we have a projective manifold X bar and T bar with a projective morphism phi bar such that, so this is the birational. So X bar and X, they're birational. And T zero is in T bar, X zero is in T X bar. So this is a compactification of this phi zero. So phi bar is a PD, and moreover, this compactification is a PD bundle as well. So phi bar is a PD bundle extending 
five zero. Next is that uh, every fiber of five bar, sorry. So here is five bar. Every fiber of five bar is finite onto its imagery under row. So this is the important property that we are going to use again and again. So every fiber here is finite under row in 2x. So let me say something on the construction of this compatibility. Indeed, the compatibility is standard. So we have a equidimensional family here over T0, right? So which means that the fiber, proper fiber, proper family. So the fibers are cycles in X. So we have a family of cycles in X. So we can naturally embed our T0 in the true variety of X, which is compact projective. Now we just take the closure of this uh, embedding. We are going to have T prime, which is a projective variety containing T0, but not necessarily smooth. And there is a universal family X prime over this T prime, given by the universal family of the Chow variety. And then we just take a resolution of this uh, singularity of the T prime and we obtain T bar and we pull back the family and take the normalization, we are going to obtain the X bar. So this is coming, this diagram comes from the Chow variety of X and the construction is uh, classic and natural. So by construction, every fiber here is finite, maps to a cycle, d-dimensional cycle in X. So this is the, the setup of the proof. Do you have any uh, question? Okay, so uh, let's continue. So okay, for simplicity, I will assume something. So we know that phi bar is a projective bundle. For simplicity of the uh, position, I assume that this projective bundle is projective Y bundle of a vector bundle. So it's a PE. So the first thing we need to show is that this F inside TX, you pull back your shift on F, you are going to uh, obtain a morphism from the pullback of F by row into pullback of TX by row. But the pullback of TX by row is of course not equal to TX bar, right? So what we are going to prove is that we can extend or anyway, we can show that this pullback of F is indeed inside the TX bar. So this is something that we, we, we need to prove and we, the proof is a, uh, maybe not really difficult, but, uh, but uh, it's quite complicated. So elementary, but complicated. So you are going, we are going to prove that this pullback of F here, which naturally inside TX bar is indeed contained, also contained in the TX bar. So, sorry, the pullback of F naturally contained in the pullback of TX is indeed also contained in TX bar. And indeed, uh, it is also contained in uh, X bar T, the relative tangent because uh, this guy is strictly net on every fiber of fiber. And now we have this. So the pullback of F, of course, is net on X bar because F is net. You prove it by, uh, by something is net. And since every fiber is finite onto its image and the row, so uh, the pullback of F is strictly net on every fiber. So we are in the following situation before. So we have a projective wise bundle. We have a net bundle inside the relative tangent and on every fiber it is a strictly net. So you replace here everything by, uh, by, by the bar version. So X bar, T bar, F bar, which is uh, F, etc. Then we are going to obtain the following thing. So either rho star F is the whole relative tangent here, or on every fiber it is there is some one blah, blah, blah. So once we prove this, uh, we can proceed by using this uh, theorem. So for simplicity, I will study the first case. So I will assume that on general fibers, it is equal to the relative tangent. So the rho star F is equal to the relative tangent of phi bar for simplicity. The idea are very similar for the second case. 
So now we pick a rational curve here. So I recall that we want to prove that it, uh, this rational curve in X, I want to prove that it is proportional to a line in the fiber of phi zero. So one can easily prove that you can lift this rational curve in X bar. So you can find some X bar uh, in, sorry, C bar in X bar, which is again a rational curve. And the image of this C bar is equal to C. So you can lift this rational curve to a rational curve in here. Now, if this lift, this C bar is in a fiber, then we are done because you can deform this uh, this guy in the fiber into something in the fiber of phi zero because phi zero is an open subset of phi bar, right? So it's open subfamily. So you can, if this lifting, this C bar is in the fiber, then we are done. You can deform it continuously to a fiber of phi zero into a fiber of phi zero. So it's numerically proportional to a line inside. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so could you uh, so could you repeat the reason uh, why can uh, why we can uh, why we can uh, lift uh, C to C bar? Okay. So so this is birational. Yeah. Yeah. If if your C is not contained in the image of the exceptional locus, so yeah. you just take the straight transform. Okay. Yeah. So otherwise. Uh, it is completely contained in the image of the exceptional locus. Mm -hmm. But now X is smooth. The fibers here are rationally connected. Okay. So you, then you use the Gar Garber Harry star uh, J trace to construct a section on a family of rationally connected variety. Okay. So, something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah so you can always leave. Uh, into a rational curve here. So if it's a fiber, so we are done. So if not, it is not in the fiber, then its image is a, is a curve. Of course, the image of a rational curve, which is again a curve, will be a rational curve again. So B is a rational curve in T bar. So we have a rational curve here. So as I mentioned earlier, I assume this case. So now, uh, we, if we are in this case, then uh, this uh, rho star f is equal to the relative tangent to totally. And by the theorem, this E is numerically projectively flat. Now you restrict this numerically projectively flat guy to a rational curve. It just means that your restriction is isomorphic to the trivial family of rational curve. Uh, of course, here, to be precise, you need to replace B by the normalization of T, but uh, by abuse of the donation, I use B as well. So here, kind of, uh, you see that the relative tangent restricted to the restriction is again the relative tangent of this uh, bundle. So the relative uh, tangent uh, restricted to this here, it is a uh, trivial on the fiber over PD. Oh, there should be a, okay, sorry. So which means that because it just means that all these fibers, because F is strictly net, if it is trivial on something on a curve, then this curve must be contracted by rho because otherwise it will be strictly net on this curve. So so what we have what we obtain is that uh, the you restrict the family to B, and then you, you have this uh, decomposition into product that every fiber over PD is contracted by rho. So by a rigidity lemma, this morphism from uh, the family over B to X under rho, you factorize, you first contract everything to B, to PD. You contract the, this factor to PD and then to X. Well, it means that it means that uh, uh, now 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 sorry so now you you still remember that C bar maps into T bar right? so C bar map to a curve in this PD and a fiber and a line in the fiber of uh, this family over B also map to PD 
by this morphism. So your C bar and a line in the fiber, they will be inside the same PD as curve. So inside here, they are numerically proportional. So in X, they're also numerically proportional. So this, this, this is how we prove that <laughs> this C bar is proportional to, a, to align the fiber. Do you have uh, any uh, questions? So the, the, the key here is that we have something a uh, numerically proportional, uh, sorry, numerically projective flats, then uh, it is related to uh, fundamental groups, then we can kill varieties with uh, simple fundamental groups such as P1, such as B. So B here is a P1, so B is a rational curve. That's why we can uh, kill the B. So you see the factor B is killed by this projection. Okay, so this is how we prove that in this special case that every rational curve in X is proportional to a line in the fiber of phi zero. Uh, in the second case, it's uh, similar. So in, in, in the O1, direct sum of O1 case, the idea is similar as I mentioned many times. But now here, I need to mention that in general, we do not know if this X bar if is uh, projectivized of a vector bundle. So we can do the problem based change. So X bar to T bar is a projective bundle then if we do the self based change, then this C bar is always a projectivized bundle of a vector bundle over X bar. So this can be proved by using the, the theory of uh, power groups. It is a classic base change. Uh, so we can reduce to a previous case, but just uh, we, a little bit more work needs to be done. But essentially, the proof are the same. So this is how we treat the general case. We do this uh, self based change. Okay, uh, I still have some time. So I, I want to show you how we can prove the equidimensionality of the Mori vibration. So you have X to T, the Mori vibration, and we need to show that T is just the closure of T zero in the trouble variety of X. So recall that uh, what we have what we done what we have done before is that we take t prime the closure of t zero in the trouble variety of x and then we have this family and then we resolve the similarities and we do pull back normalization and we obtain this phi bar from x bar to t bar. What we need to prove that is t equal to t prime. So we will prove by contradiction. So assume they are not the same. If they are not the same, then you will see that there will be a curve in T bar, which is contracted by gamma, so contracted in T, but not contracted by R. Indeed, otherwise, by, by this uh, uh, rigidity lemma, so otherwise, there will be a natural morphism from T to T prime. And then by, by this uh, universal property, if you pull back the family, you see that T must be equal to T prime. So if T has a natural morphism from T to T prime, then T must be equal to T prime. So we assume that that's not the same. So you cannot have a natural morphism from T to T prime. It means that in a common resolution, uh, there is a curve here, which is contracted here, but not contracted. So uh, again, uh, for simplicity, I assume that uh, X bar over T bar is PE. And we consider the case that uh, it's a relative tangent case. So in this case, the E is numerically projectivity flat. So now, uh, similarly as before, we restrict the family on B. But here we need to work a little bit more. So what we use is that since T is the base of the Mori vibration, it has KLT singularity. Now, since E is numerically projectivity flat, we will show that there is a finite morphism E prime over B such that this pullback uh, projective bundle is trivial. So let me say something on this argument. So E is numerically projectively flat. So as we have seen, the projectivized bundle is isomorphic to a projective bundle induced by 
the representation of the metal group. So in the special case when T is smooth and T bar is also smooth, then they have the same fundamental group. So a flat projective bundle here can always descend to a flat projective bundle on T. But uh, here we only have, uh, sorry. So, so in this case, so if, if you can descend a projective, flat projective bundle over T, then you pull back this descent, uh, you are going to obtain the same uh, projective bundle. That's why if you restrict this projective bundle on the fiber, on the curve contracted uh, by this morphism, it will be trivial because it is the pullback of a projective bundle from the base. So that's, that's why what happens uh, here. So in the case when T has KLT singularities, we use a theorem of Chen Yang Xu and uh, KB grab KB goes PTNL, we show that we can proceed a Gaussian adult based change to obtain the similar property, which means that up to a Gaussian adult finite based change, a projective, uh, this projective bundle here, flat projective bundle here, can descend to a flat projective bundle here. So after the base change, its restriction on fiber is trivial. But the fiber here, I mean, other base, after the change, it's finite onto a fiber here. So, yeah. so we are paying, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. so, uh, so I have a question. Uh, so could you recall uh, how we can prove that uh, T has a KLT singularity? Uh, so it, uh, to prove the singularity, so X has, uh, say, KLT singularity, so Q factorial, then uh, it is known oh. that T is Q factorial. Then you use the Kawamada's uh, Kawamada canonical bundle formula, kind of you oh. can relate the uh, above and uh, below the. Yeah. That, uh, this is uh, a consequence of Kawamada's uh, uh, canonical bundle formula. That and, means uh, that if phi is uh, more vibration, in this case, uh, if x is KLT, then the base is also KLT. Yeah, if x is KLT, then base is KLT. So that, that's the precise statement. Okay. So the proof can be found in, uh, in Fujino's paper, which is in, published in 2000, I think. Okay. So I think the title is Application of Kalmada's Theorem. Okay. So, uh, so, so that's why, we, so this he, it's here we use the fundamental group again. So, so we use the fundamental group, so we reduce the case that you have a, uh, you have a curve B prime here, which is contracted in T, but which is not contracted in T prime. And moreover, the family over B prime, the pullback is projected family to T prime is the trivial family. Now it follows that uh, as before, the all fibers, uh, all fibers here over PD is contracted. So the morphism here, to here from P E restricted to B prime to E is factorized through P D. So you, you first contract this factor B prime to P D, and then you map this P D to X, which means that the whole family of cycles over B prime map to a same cycle in X. So now by definition of Chow variety, it means that the whole curve is contracted to a one point in the Chow variety because they parameterize the same cycle, which means that uh, it is contracted here in the point in T prime. So this is a contradiction. I think that's all, thank you. Okay, uh, so thank you, Wong Hao. Any question? Uh, so I have a question. So uh, can we expect some converse of your main theorem? So for instance, so if we have a rising body structure over a compact uh, projective manifold where the pure map is uh, quasi finite, uh, does the projectivization of this uh, VHS is uh, is uh, is an uh, example candidate for your, for your main theorem? Like, uh, Uh, my thing, eh? you mean the Gassi, the... Uh, your mention oh. say that if you have a strict net, uh, a strict net uh, subshift of, um, of, uh, of a tangent model, then uh, 
the, the, the vibration so that uh, the uh, not not this one so the the, the measure so with uh, with the ah. yes so I uh, so you say that then you have a vibration over hyperbolic manifold I mean uh, uh, and the uh, the, the subshift is just a relative tangent model. Yes, this one. So I mean, if if now uh, t, uh, okay. So if now t is a uh, is a projective manifold, if we have, we have a variation of Hodge structures over t, so that uh, this uh, uh, this variation of Hodge structure has quasi finite pure map. I mean, uh, then uh, of course, so t is a hyperbolic manifold. Uh, but I mean, I, I wonder whether the projectivization of this VHS uh, is just. Uh, is just uh, this uh, this x. So I mean, the x if let x be a projectivization of this VHS, and uh, f is a relative tangent bundle of x over this t. I wonder if this relative tangent bundle is true for Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, it might be so for for CBC, maybe we can first look at a case of phase is one dimensional. In this case, I. Uh -huh. In this case, it seems to be true. I'm not very familiar with uh, variation of Hodge structures, but but the period map just means that you have some uh, tangent direction is uh, so. Uh, I, because uh, I think uh, all the one example you given is something unitary uh, representation. Uh, yes. I want. I think uh, the for non-billion, uh, so it should be a more uh, more close to. I mean, for even very surprising that if you have a uh, uh, some unitary representation, you can get some strict nepness. I mean, uh, if we have some uh, representation which is like variation of Hodge structure, it's much more uh, stronger than uh, non-billion cases than the something than the unitary one. So I I, I think it should be some uh, good candidate for your. Man theorem, converse of your man theorem. I mean, uh, yeah, but uh, but for example, if you see uh, the mm -hmm. it will be proved that uh, here in the here, so there is always some uh, neighborhood project black things. Yes. So, but here, if you have this guy, the representation is always a kind of an extension of unitary representations. Mm. Okay. So if you give a uh, arbitrary representation, that might not be true. I see. I, see. I mean, f f maybe you need to change the complex structure or modify a little bit, but uh -huh. but uh, okay. So not so sure it will be true. So because yeah. here, what we obtain is that it is always a extension of uh -huh. a unitary projective re PGL representation, PUL or yeah, P P P G P. U representation, an extension of P. I see, I see. So it must be some, okay. But you mean this converse, you don't know it's it's true or not. So if it's a numerical projective flat, uh, if E is a numerical project, then X is, a so I mean, just a wonder the converse can be true. Oh, no, uh, no, uh, one direction is not true. So for example, you take the trivial bundle, this won't yes. be true. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just how to, Excluded as the trivial trivial cases, is it possible to formulate this one? Uh, indeed, uh, maybe I can explain a little bit uh, why uh, Manfred's example work. So indeed, he proved that uh, you, you construct such a representation. Uh, the image here, so this is a discrete group in S U R. But then, if you take the uh, closure of this discrete group, it will be the whole S U R. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, uh, you show that uh, for such representation, uh, it must be a irreducible representation for the, for the fundamental group. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it should be related to uh, stable, irreducible, something like polystable or... Okay, I see, I see. Yeah, uh, so the thing is that uh, it is a uh, yeah. Either it's yeah. I think I guess it, it is related to the representation. Either it's kind of a polystable or or semi-simple representation, something like that. Hmm. Okay. Okay. 
because because the uh, the final conclusion you get uh, so you prove the high velocity you you, you just are really producing some representation of the fundamental group which is really non billion uh, non billion cases so uh, so that's why I I expect them might be something similar. Yes. Hmm. Okay, so this is my question. So, uh, Jian Xiao, maybe have other question? So. Uh, can you explain again uh, why why the base is hyperbolic? Uh, the base. Uh, let me. Yeah, the manifold T. Okay, so so here, so first we we observe that uh, so this is something which we always happens. So you. So for simplicity, you look at this case, but the general case, you proceed the base change, it will be similar. So the thing is that you always have something uh, numerically projected flat. So either here uh, or here. So you, we focus on this case, you have, this is numerically projected flat. Uh, then, uh, So, for for example, you, uh, you 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 also, for simplicity, you you think of this uh, uh, numerically flat. So you remove the projectively conditions, which means that you consider a special case that uh, the determinant is divisible by the rank. So in this case, uh, it is associated to a flat vector bundle. So this E, you you even better you imagine E is a flat vector bundle in this case. But up to isomorphism, a numerically flat is flat. So it is associated to a representation of the of the fundamental group. So if this representation uh, is virtually abelian, then up to a tall cover, you can assume that this representation is abelian. Now, if you have an abelian, so the image is abelian. So now you can just uh, triangulate your uh, representation simultaneously because you have a, a a billion family right so 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 this is a or you say this so of a group then you have a common eigen uh, vector so you have a common uh, uh, subspace of dimension one so the uh, common eigen vector it will con it will correspond to uh to a to, yeah so or, or a co-dimension one that they're the same so you have a co-dimension one uh, irreducible, uh, uh, sorry, you have a co-dimension one sub-representation. So you have a subspace uh, which is stable under representation, which is co-dimension one in total space. And this, in terms of vector bundles, you are going to have a, a flat uh, quotient E to a line bundle L and a kernel K corresponds to your uh, stable uh, subspace. And now you have an E to L, and now you can, uh, this line bundle quotient corresponds to a section of T of the base into the total family, total space X. And your restriction of your tautological line bundle O1 on this section is just equal to the quotient here, E to L. And this is a numerically trivial thing because it is a flat line bundle. This will show that uh, your relative tangent will be trivial, I mean, can never be a, it is a quotient of trivial bundle on this section. So that, that's why it won't be true. So this is how we uh, show that uh, the, the representation must be uh, non-virtually abelian. The non-virtual so, abelian- uh, do, do you have some uh, curvature Restriction on, on the base T. Uh, we do not have curvature restriction on the base. What we obtain is this uh, representation property. So this E gives you a uh, non-virtually abelian uh, representation, and by using uh, other people's theorem here. So for example, if you have such representation, uh, you have P and T has a linear representation whose image is not virtually abelian then any entire curve in T is not Zariski dense. So you now you replace T by the Zariski closure of one entire curve. 
kind of you are going to have the same thing because the relative tangent bundle commutes with phase change and the strict nafness uh, is preserved under restriction. So you will see that the Zariski closure of your rational curve, I'm sorry, your entire curve uh, also have a non virtual abelian representation. In particular, this entire curve cannot be Zariski dense in this Zariski dense, uh, Zariski closure. That's a contradiction. So we do not obtain a curvature condition on the base. We obtain a representation condition on the base. So, so this, I, I have so this is not a trivial theorem. So this is a theorem by Yamanoi using a lot of uh, non abelian Hodge theory and some Gromov shown to produce harmonic maps or, or VHS. But the, the, the result used is, uh, is, is is very difficult. So the the, the presentation is not a very mature abelian then uh, there's no Sarisk dense entire curve. I mean. So the, this is uh, I think may, might answer Jen's question because uh, it's not a coverage. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the result of Yamanoi. Yeah. Yes, yes, Yamanoi. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. Yes. Thanks for the reminder. But it's yeah. really difficult result. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other questions? Uh, so I have one question. Uh, yes, that, uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so if f is not, uh, so if f is not uh, locally free, uh, so the main difficulty to prove your uh, your structural theorem in this case uh, is which part? Uh, uh, I'm not so sure, but uh, so let let's go to the. Yeah, so let's first come to here. So mm. maybe one can prove uh, with uh, much difficulty that uh, uh, here, X is a unit root, this part should be fine. Because, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah. And then here, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if it, it still works. Yeah. So I, I never checked the, how to prove uh, Andrew David Nupski's theorem without mm -hmm. assuming the, 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 the low freeness. So maybe you can ask Liu, Liu Jie for, for more details. So I, I don't know if this part work again. <laughs> and then uh, the next thing is here. So uh, mm, maybe if we assume F to be reflexive, Maybe, maybe if we assume F to be reflexive, maybe we can even prove that it is uh, locally free. Mm. Indeed, the, 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 the theorem here we prove, we use, right? This guy here, the, the theorem here we use, right? So the blah, 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 blah. Uh, this thing we prove here, we do not assume E to be uh, locally free at the beginning. But, but this kind of this positivity result is kind of a formal computation. Mm -hmm. uh, if this is still true and uh, and this is we, we you see if we do not assume uh, e locally free at the beginning, we still obtain e locally free in the end. So maybe mm -hmm. with some hopes, we can we can prove that uh, in that case, mm -hmm. if we assume. Uh, the, the shift is reflexive. Okay. But if we are assuming the shift to be reflexive, mm. maybe it, some some more te tools would be needed. Um, I don't know much. Mm. So for uh, so for the main main uh, so for the main difficult part, it's for the first step or two. Uh, wait a second. Uh. The main difficulty might be, I mean, uh, the third and the fourth part rely strongly the uh, oh. the the numerically projected flat things. So we need to always produce some numerically projected flat things here. Mm -hmm. So in this case, E is numerically projected flat. It might be possible that F is not. But in the second case, indeed, we prove that F is numerically projected flat vector bundle. So in the case, if you assume F to be uh, not locally free, and mm. if you cannot prove that uh, it is locally free, 
in the second step, I don't know how to go further in the fourth, third, third and fourth step. Uh, so, uh, so for the main difficulty, it's for the second part of this theorem. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, I, I think. I see. Same, yeah. same. It, it just, a, just a remark on the question of uh, Jun Yang and the mm. construction of uh, Arojo. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess in the, in the construction of Arojo, uh, the yeah. main yeah. point is to show that uh, this family of rational curves does not uh, split. Mm. In this case, you need to control the degree of uh, the determinant of the shift mm. uh, over the rational curves. If it's not locally free, I mean, if the curve is controlling in the center locus of the mm. of the shift, it's very difficult to control. You know, you don't know, mm. you don't know the degree of. Uh, mm. I mean, mm. you don't know, mm. you don't know if the degree of uh, the yeah, determinant uh, over the right curve will jump up or something like that. So, Okay, okay, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. So so for this part it's quite a difficult uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. okay is there uh, any questions? Uh if there's no no questions, so let's thank the speaker again. So thank you, Wen Hao. Okay, uh thanks for the invitation and thanks for your attention. <laughs>